hey, if you've been watching the channel, you know that I have a goal to see 150 species of reptiles and amphibians this year. And we actually did really well already. I'm at 135. And that's mostly because we've had a couple of international trips and we had a really productive spring. And so I'm down in Southern California, back at, back at home, and it's getting tougher and tougher to get new species. I've really seen most of the things that are out here. But today I'm gonna to target a couple of the things that I've missed out on. And some of that is actually some of the non-native species. So we're actually headed to Palos, I say we, I mean, I'm in the, you can see, I'm in the car by myself. I'm just sort of used to it when, when I've, I've got a friend or two with me. But I'm headed down to uh, Palos Verdes to go look for the Italian wall lizards. So not a native species, but they're a nice population there. So it's one more, hopefully we'll see to cross off the list. And uh, Palos Verdes is actually really nice. Uh, there's a really great spot nearby in the winter time for drone flying where you can see the whales that are passing by. They do one of the, the gray whale counts out there. They've had fin whales in the bay there. So like it's, it's, it's a nice spot for that. And also just on like the other side, it's one of my favorite spots to go look at grunion. So those are those fish that, that breed on shore at night. And uh, Cabrillo Beach is actually the place for it. And uh, you can look it up online. They actually, the, the, the Fish and Wildlife Department, they post times for when the like, grunion runs are happening so you know exactly when, when to be there. It's, it's really productive. We're out of season now. Um, it kind of ended uh, just like a couple weeks ago, but still, uh, you know, next season I definitely recommend stopping there or any of the many beaches uh, in Southern California where the like, grunion uh, are breeding. But anyway, let's take a look. Hopefully we can get uh, 136 at our first stop. All right, so we made it to the spot. And what I like to do is I like to walk just down the sidewalk here and uh, and look in the sunny areas and see if any lizards are basking. It shouldn't take too long. They're usually they're usually pretty common at just this one intersection. So it should be pretty easy to to just uh, check this species off the list and uh, and keep going. Well, what do you know? We found one already tucked in there. There you can see him. Uh, did he, oh, he moved a little bit, but I think I saw another another smaller one uh, back there somewhere. Let's see if we can get just a, a better diagnostic view for you all. All right, we finally got one out in the open, looking lovely. Uh, you can see that it's nice and green, um, and so really not something you're going to get confused with other of our native species out here. But yeah, these guys just hang out in the neighborhood here. This is really the only uh, population that I know uh, in Southern California. Um, and yeah, they're just kind of, they're kind of cool hanging around. I think that lovely pocket of Italian walleters has been around since 1994. Um, so it's been it's been established for quite a long time. Uh, these lizards are obviously non-native. They're they're from Italy, and I think this population is specifically from from Sicily. Um, and they did some genetic testing, I think, in 2010. But we uh, we checked our species off the list. That should have been 136. Uh, so let's keep going and see if we can get 137. We're off to Irvine. This next lizard is famous for being parthenogenic, and that means that it can actually give birth without having its eggs fertilized. So the Sonoran spotted whiptail, all of the individuals in this species are female. And so you only need one in order for a population to be started. And that's what they think happened here back in 2014 when the population was discovered. Now they studied it a little bit more and actually they're kind of spreading throughout Orange County. And you would think that this population that seems to be spreading throughout the county would be easy to find, but I've actually already been to three locations and I haven't had any success. So I'm gonna keep looking and hopefully we'll get one because we still have a bit more of the day and hopefully we'll get to show you one. So let's keep searching. Well, here's another non-native species that can be quite common in the Los Angeles area. This is a scaly-breasted munia. Uh, I think they're originally from the Indo-Pacific, but we got them here. There's a pretty sizable population, so cool to see that. 
here are some more non-native species. These are pin-tailed whitas. Uh, the, the males can be quite uh, shocking uh, when they're in their breeding plumage. They have these really, really long tails. But this time of year, they're just kind of short, uh, jumping around. They kind of look like, uh, like a small finch. You can see they got these nice uh, orange beaks as well. Easy to identify. All right, this is a good sign. I just saw an itty bitty baby whiptail and it's probably the Sonoran spotted in this area. Now, unfortunately, it scampered off into the brush there and I did not get any documentation. So uh, we will have to keep looking, but this is a good sign that we, this is like maybe the fourth, no, no, no. It's the fifth spot that we've been to. So we've put in a lot of time and uh, and hopefully we'll be rewarded with a sighting. So stay tuned. We finally got one. <laughs> We're not gonna be able to look at it very long, but you can see it's very, very stripy. And um, it's like I, the, um, the Western whiptails, which are one of the native species out here, they have a lot of very um, sort of blotchy and, and sometimes they're the blotches and the stripes sort of combined together. I've lost it already. I don't even see where it is. And the, um, the orange-throated whiptail can also look very similar, but they're not, um, they're not here. Oh, there it goes. Um, they're not in this particular area. So, and, uh, here we go. This is a baby. Their whiptails in general are pretty big lizards. And so, you know, these guys will, can get, um, their bodies can be, you know, a couple inches big. I'm not exactly sure how big the, the full grown adults are, but this is, this is a very, very young, uh, individual born this year. And, uh, I keep seeing a little glimpse of it here and there, but it disappears. This might, oh, there it is. Um, this might be the only look we get of this uh, very unique species due to the, um, the parcinogenics that I was explaining before, but ex I'm really, I'm very excited. This is a lifer for me, and so it's taking a lot of time today to find it. I don't even see it anymore, but all right. The day is coming to a close. I don't know if we'll have chance for for one more species, but um, if this guy's not being super cooperative, I don't want to spend all day with him. So, on to the next thing. Well, this is just turning into a day filled with a bunch of non-native species. This is a fox squirrel. They're found in the eastern part of the United States, and at some point they were introduced here to the urban areas. They're pretty common. We actually get these in my neighborhood um, back, uh, back in Los Angeles, but here is a lovely example of one. They have some really nice sort of orangish, colors uh, to their belly. It's one way that you might differentiate them from a gray squirrel, which doesn't have that coloration. Um, they're also usually a little bit larger too, but one more non-native species uh, that you might find out here. See you, fella. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about some of the non-native species that you can find in Los Angeles and Orange County. If you like this kind of content and you like seeing the native stuff too, please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Greg Schechter, this is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field.